Hey guys, Pete here with GIS Solutions, and today I'm going to show you how to create a 3D model using a Google Maps image. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so let's get started. There's three things we're going to need. As one is going to be render doc. The other one is going to be from a GitHub page. We're going to get the maps model importer. And finally, Blender. It's very important that we uh, pull particular versions on all three for this to work. Otherwise, it might not work. I've tried several different ways, different combinations of versions, and some work and some don't. So that's a big caveat here. So with Render Doc, and I'll leave all the links in the descriptions down below, as well as the versions that I'm using. We'll go over here to other builds. And the version I'm using is 1.16. So right here we have 32-bit and 64-bit. So be mindful of these two columns. And to know that right now, to the best of my knowledge, that this only works in Windows. So I have 64-bit, so I'll be pulling from the middle column here. And we just scroll down to version 1.17. Okay, I already have it installed, but what I would do is just click this installer and download that and install it. And the next thing we need is this Maps Models Importer. And by all means, we'll give credit to the, to the person who put this all together, and you can certainly donate to help them for all the hard work that they've done. So the version we're going to use is 0.0. Excuse me, 0 0.40. So to find that, we'll go over here to releases and click this link, plus 25 releases. This will show all the uh, histories prior to the latest version. So 0 0.40. And that'll be right down here, version 0 0.4.0. Okay, so once we find that, We'll go and click on to that. And since we're here, this is a very important piece of code that we're going to add. And I'll include this in the description down below as well. So we'll circle back on that. So if we click onto this link and we scroll down, we're going to download this file right here, Maps Models Importer version 0.4.0 zip. So go and download that. And finally, for Blender, blender.org, I am using version 2.93.6. So to find that, we come up here to download previous versions, all previous versions, and we just scroll down to 2.93. So once you click onto that, and actually it's 2.93.6.6. And I have Windows 64, so I downloaded this zip file right here, 2.93.6, and installed it. All right, so we could go ahead and... Oh, and the important thing here is we need to close out of Google Chrome altogether. Otherwise, this, this will not work. So I'm going to close out. And if you need to follow, by all means, use like Firefox or watch on another mobile, mobile device. OK, so the next thing we need to do is find in your program files where you have Google Chrome. In my instance, it's under C program files, Google Chrome applications. And that's where my executable is right here. And if you recall, there was that snippet of code from that GitHub site. Um, I'm going to leave this in the description down below as well. But the part you might need to change, this is just unique to me, where my chrome.exe resides. So if yours is different, you need to change within this highlighted section. Okay. So I'll minimize that. So with our 
Google Chrome, we're going to right click onto it and create a shortcut. Go and say yes to this. It's basically saying that you can't create another shortcut within this uh, uh, folder, but you could create it on the desktop, and that's what we want to do. So go and say yes. I have two screens, so I'm just going to pull this over. Now, what we need to do is right click onto this shortcuts, go to properties. Under target here, if you just click in there, do control A to select everything and delete. And we want to copy this code and remember to change this portion right here to uh, match what you have personally, otherwise it won't work. And I'm going to paste that. When I apply, you'll see that the icon changes to a command prompt icon. So what we're going to do now is double click onto that. And you'll see that I have a window that's blank. Also, there was a small window that popped up. It's going to generate a unique ID, and this is going to be different from what you'll have. So keep that in mind. So we'll keep that here, and let's go ahead and open our render doc. And again, I'm using version 1.16. What I'm going to do is go to inject into process, but this might not be visible offhand. So what we need to do is go to tools, settings, under general, be sure that this box here is checked. It wasn't when I downloaded it, I had to check it. Enable process injection. And it says require restart required, which is true. Once you select onto that, say OK, close out of the program, open it back up, and then you should see this right here under file, inject, inject into process. And what we're gonna do is that, that little ID that popped up here, we're gonna add that. So three, four, five, four, four. So I'm gonna put right here, three, four, five, four, four. And what I'm gonna do is select onto that. I'm gonna double click onto it. And the status says that it has been established. So that's a good thing. So we'll go back to that little window and I'll say, okay. So this browser now is in a debugger state. So I'll go and open that up and I'm going to go to my Google map. Okay. So under layers, we want to click on more and we want to make sure that we're in the 3d view, the globe view, and we'll go to satellite imagery and we'll close out of that. And what I'm going to do is zoom into an area of interest. and right here. So what we want to do is go ahead and let all the textures here render. So as you can see, as I move it, the textures of these buildings will start to draw and take your time with this because if we gather our image too soon, a lot of the textures I haven't had a chance to render and it won't make the quality of your image um, as sharp as it could be. So I'm just simply just going around, zooming in and out, letting everything draw in nicely. Okay, so I have most of what I want rendered here. And don't worry about these little icons, they're not going to come in on your photo. Um, and finally, when you have set, go ahead and set the uh, Google Maps to where you want to have the image taken. And I want to have it right about here. Okay. So we'll come back over here to our render docs. And we're going to click on to this right here where it says capture frames immediately. And what we got to do is kind of move this around a little bit. And you can see it right here. 
Now you'll notice it's about 53 and a half megabytes. That's kind of standard from when I've been playing around. So it's, you know, it's a decent size file. If you double click onto this, it will load. And then we will want to do is go to file, save capture as, and go and just put it into whatever file folder you like, but make sure it's has this extension, the RDC. Okay, and go and click save. And we're done with that. In Blender, you go and once you have it open, you could delete that default cube. We'll come up here to, actually the first thing we need to do is add that extension that we download from GitHub. So if you go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons. Now I already have it installed, but I'll show you if you just type in Map. It's right here, it's under Import Export in its Maps Models Importer. So once you find that, make sure this is clicked, and then you're done with that part. And we'll add the image by going to File, Import, that RDC extension, and then we're just gonna find out where that load, or where you save the image off to. We select that, Import into, import to Blender rather. Now this might take a few seconds because it was you know a decent sized file. Uh, just give it a moment to, to draw here. And here's our image. And if we come up here, we could add the texture to it. The, uh, the aerial imagery to it. And there's your 3D model. A very cool way to take an image from Google Maps and make a 3D model of it. So again, the takeaway here is really to make sure you're using those right versions. Uh, again, I'll put those in the link down to, in the description down below. Also that you have closed all of your Google Chrome um, windows and you've added that, this part right here into that copy of your Google Chrome that's on the, on the desktop and it's pointing to where your, that executable is on your desktop. As always, please leave a comment down below. If you guys have any questions, I'm more than happy to help. And if you guys find this useful. I do appreciate it. If you like and subscribe, it definitely helps me. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.